you know, George Orwell said, he was criticizing British socialists even though he was a socialist himself. He said, well, typical British middle class socialist doesn't like the poor, they just hate the rich. Do they actually have sympathy for the working class? Are they really trying to put their, their needs forward? Or do they just hate the successful, mm -hmm. depending on how that's divided up? And I thought, well, how do you make a judgment like that? And I had the, this personal experience, but then I thought, well, that's easy with Marxism. It's like, you just look at all the murders, and you, then you know whether that was a movement that was genuinely motivated by empathy. Right, and a lot of people die in all of this leftist stuff. Yeah, a lo a lo yeah. yeah, like a, an unbelievable number, and, yeah. and not just members of the oppressor class, let's say, mm -hmm. like everyone. <laughs> and it, it yeah. happens over and over, you know, and it's really worth thinking about because, well, when you might know, think, well, is that somehow embedded in the Marxist doctrine? Is it an inevitable consequence of the unfolding of these ideas? And someone like Ayn Rand, for example, would say definitely, and Solzhenitsyn made that case too in the Gulag Archipelago, but it's not self-evident. But I think there's a level under which, underneath the ideas that you could go and say, well, what's motivating this? Is it actually like saintly compassion for the downtrodden? Or is it resentment about the fact that life is unfair and tragic, which it definitely is. It, it, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, by their fruits ye shall know them. That's the answer to that question. It's like, well, if, if 30, 40 million people die in the aftermath of the revolution, and a tremendous number of them are ordinary people, and that happens repeatedly, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, I guess it's, it must be <laughs> resentment and hatred, because, right. like, how else do you account for all of that. The proof is in the pudding, so to speak. Well, uh, if, you know, and if you're not willing to accept that sort of thing as proof, you've got to also ask, like, well, okay, what would you allow to falsify your theory? Like, how many corpses have to stack up before yeah. you think, And the, oh, number, the number's pretty high already, so... It's, it's uncountable. It, yeah. You know, like, we don't know. We don't know how many people died as a consequence of communist totalitarianism. It could be 50 million, it could be 150 million. Those are big error bars. Yeah. You know, like that's that's a big that's a big problem when you can't count in the tens of millions when you can't get the damn estimate right. And it happened in multiple cultures, right? Because you might say, well, it was just specific to a time and place. It wasn't intrinsic to this radical doctrine. Yeah, well, there's not that much that's the same about the Soviet Union and all of its countries, let's say. Broad range of cultures. Maoist China, Cambodia, you know, places in Africa as well, these aren't the same places. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, you drop that poisonous seed in there and it's like mayhem in no time flat. And nothing works. Like it's so, so I'm going for the, don't be thinking that you're so saintly just because you claim to stand for the oppressed. It's like examine your conscience. And, well, but that and then, thing, that thing though, is a drug to people, right? I mean, that you know, what we refer to as virtue signaling and all of that, but that, that feeling that you're always looking out for everyone else, you'll always sacrifice yourself for anyone else, you'll always attack the, the privileged and supposed people above you. It really, there's something in that that, uh, that has like an addictive quality, Well, right? the question is, what's the drug? You know, the question, the drug might be, oh, I'm a good person, maybe, but like a more psychoanalytically minded person might say, no, that's not actually the drug. The drug is the hatred and the rationalization for the use of power and the, and the, and the wish for totalitarian control mm -hmm. and tyrannical rule that the, that the mask, mask of virtue covers. So the virtue signaling, actually, that's, that's not what's really providing the big kick. Uh -huh. You know, it's like, I'm a good person. It's like, no, it's even better than this. It's like, I've got a place to direct my worst, my worst impulses. I don't even have to notice them myself because I've got this mask of virtue. And so I can let the, let's call them, you know, the demonic forces that make up part of the human psyche. I can let them have carte blanche and, and then also say that I'm virtuous. You know, I would yeah, say that's, that's, power, that's a power powerful combination. Yeah, well, it looks like it's a powerful combination. I mean, if you, if you look at the way people behave, it, historically speaking, it, it, it looks, I mean, it's often that, that great horrors are perpetrated by people who mask them in a utopian covering, right? Right. Because well, nobody, no no <laughs> nobody comes out and says, hey, well, I'm Satan himself, you know, it's like I'm out here to do harm. Right. That isn't what people, but, but somehow harm gets done. Yeah. And so, 
you know, one of the things I really like about the American political system is that it's, it's not predicated on a utopian ideal. You know, the, the founders of the American system, of course, they were basically English, but, you know, the founders of the American system said, okay, well, you know, you can't trust people to do the right thing. It doesn't mean they're all bad, but mm -hmm. you, you can't assume that they're going to do the utopian thing. That isn't what people are like, and they tend to take care of themselves first, and maybe that's okay, and maybe it's not, but it has to be bounded. But given what we know about the um, imperfection of individuals and societies, let's try to build a system that no idiot can screw up too badly. Yeah, and I think that that's so essence. mature, man. It's so it's so psychologically informed and and so wise.